Okay. Okay, we are just about ready to get into this game here. Welcome back, Dax. How was your break? Dax? Oh, hang on. I might be muted for him. Was I muted? I was muted. <laughs> Dax, how was no, your break? You. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic. Just able to grab a drink there uh, in between the action. Uh, so I am ready. I am ready to go for game number two here in this uh, double header we have tonight. All right. The lobby is in the process of being set up. It is up if you want to join in here. Um, but in the meantime, while everyone's getting in here, we can go over what happened with the coin toss and map bans. Let's switch over to that screen now. So we had Soak Every Lane winning that coin toss and opting to go for first pick here. They banned out Dragonshire and Brax's holdout, so they don't like those uh, solo lane control point maps here. <clears throat> I guess on the side of Soak Every Lane. And then for Arrogant Nephilim, they've decided to take away Cursed Hollow and Hanamura and ended up picking Towers of Doom. So that's where we'll be going for game number one. I love Towers of Doom. It's one of my favorites. I know some people hate it, but I just like it. Yeah, I like this one too. I mean, I know uh, you love playing off lane. Uh, I know you have a, a love for Leoric of late as well. But this is mm -hmm. just one of those maps where like people find boring in the off lane. But I, I something about no, this map, I'm with I you. Love the I double love double soak yeah. and trying to like win it on the XP. Like if you can, if you can do the double soaking in the mid top lane and outplay the other solo laner, you're gonna just get the rest of your team a little bit ahead on XP and allow the four man to you know kill it in the bottom lane. Um, so personally, I like it. And even if I'm not offlining, uh, well, my other favorite hero to play is Sylvanas, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good map for her as well. Stukov is one of my favorites on here as well, because he can silence those minions, uh, like, and just like, uh, Sylvanas can shut them down as well to kind of, uh, you know, stop any sort of shenanigans with those pumpkins in the bot lane. But yeah, we're gonna see these teams trickle in here. So I, you know, potentially see maybe a Zul uh, ban here. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, a little weird. I know I've seen uh, a couple. Of, uh, I've seen these teams play a handful of times. Uh, I know some certain heroes that certain heroes do play that I've seen them play on this map. Uh, I won't uh, spoil anything just in case if there's some people in the chat. I know we do have the delay, but we're not in this draft yet, so. Um, <laughs> so just hopefully maybe a little bit of spice there, but, uh, yeah, looking for, uh, an exciting game number one. <laughs> Twitch link got dro dropped in the NGS chat and Kimmy says, I gave the link. So now you got to root for, uh, um, arrogant Nephilim. <laughs> Yep, Gaslow still has the two-week ban as well as D.Va, but next week they should be live. Um, played against a really nasty Gaslow in some Storm League games today and just was really oppressive, actually on this map, uh, too. I was watching some of the in-houses that Jinxie was running, and, and there was some um, Gaslow being played there, which is kind of fun to see. Just one of those heroes that I, I I just don't like. Like he would be like the one hero. Like if I could remove a hero from this game, I think it would be Gaslo. <laughs> don't want to deal with him. Every time I see that little meme pop up of the play play new Gaslo or draw twenty five cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I laugh uh, so hard. It makes me chuckle every that. single time. <laughs> I just hate, I don't know what it is. I just hate <laughs> that hero so much. Uh, I think we all have those heroes we hate playing. I don't even know if I actually, you know what? I don't even think I own him. I, I have to look. I probably not. And if I do, I wish I could sell him back. For me, I can't stand Tyrael and Uther. They're just, ugh. I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. Really oppressive heroes there, too. But yeah, Tyrael just kind of feels bad. Uther. It's not that. It just, I don't know. I find them boring to play. The only so time push all the buttons. I don't know. The only time Tyrael's fun to play is if you go judgment and then you're just kind of saying, screw you to the rest of your team. I'm going to let you die. <laughs> I don't care what happens. I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's like oh he's my. like the Illidan of tanks. He's just gonna dive into the back line when he goes judgment. Yep. And ignore the rest of his team. Twenty three dollars on whoever goes murky. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let them know that we're ready when they are. Okay. All right. Here, an M M. Is it M M Mig, or Mates. is it M I G? I don't. It looks like they are uh, a player on Arrogant Nephilim. Maybe a sub by chance, just sitting in the chat here rooting for the team. But who doesn't like twenty five bucks? All right, I think we're going to be getting into this draft here. As I said, kicking it off on Towers of Doom for game number one tonight. This map being picked by Arrogant Nephilim as Soak Every Lane has decided to go with first pick after winning the coin Towers toss. of Doom. Take a look at these two teams here, what they've played so far this season. Looks like we got some Sonya action going on. A little bit of mouthfeel. Both uh, heroes really good at this map. Yeah, like I said, I, I've fortunately had the opportunity to cast both of these teams um, this week and, and last week. So I'm excited to see how they pair up against each other. Um, both of them have had the opportunity to go up against Uwu. Soak every lane, losing that one 2 1, Arrogant Nephilim 2 0. So it's interesting to see after they both lost a game to Uwu how they're going to pair up against each other here. All right. Yep. And we're just going to some target bans here. Uh, both both sides in the Fisto and the Orphea both being played by the respective teams. So, uh, you know, not getting those comfort picks. And just some of the name pronunciations going on in the chat. A lot of creative names here, but I always feel bad if I pronounce it wrong. It's actually Kamehameha. <laughs> oh, perfect. The abridged version. And Cassia Band, still really good, uh, even after getting two uh, nerfs, two patches in a row. All right, Zul is still on the board for that first pick. Uh, let's see if it maybe gets banned here, but Chromie, another strong mage. Uh, w still getting hit with that nerf bat, but still really strong. And then we're going to see ETC grab first. Now I'm just trying to like memorize how to pronounce these names because I know I'm going to screw it up. And I don't want to tilt anyone. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no one can tell that. I apologize in advance. I will probably mispronounce your name. Kai me? Kai me? Is that right? See, I always or said Kai... it was Kai me, and no, I wait. thought it was Ki May. I thought it was Kai corrected me? one time. I don't know. Ki May. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Ki May. I'm pretty sure it's Ki May because I was casting one of their games before. Trieb? Trieb? Or Trieb? Trieb? Trieb. Trieb. Okay. Trieb. I've been calling them Trabe, so sorry if that's, <laughs> sorry if that's wrong. Trieb. But we could see a Deckard pick up here. Really good on this map. There he is. And then the Sylvanas. So uh, we've got a really te good team comp uh, over on the side of Soak Every Lane so far. Uh, but we have the Double Soaker and uh, just good old, uh, you know, Rainer. You know, a lot of people figure he's boring to play, but he does so many things well uh, that I'm never bad. <laughs> I'm never up to set to see a Rainer on my team. <laughs> out comes the Sonya ban on the side of Arrogant Nephilim here. I think that Soak Every Lane played some Sonya in their previous mm -hmm. matches. And if I remember correctly, he, or who, I can't remember who's playing it, but it was kind of a pain in the butt for Uwu. So it looks like Philippic was the Sonya player. 100% uh, win rate on her uh, five games played on Sonya. I mean, I still think she's no nerfs, no nothing really to her. She's just really good. Um, especially, you know, Leap's probably not the you know, best talent to be picking, but it's still one of my favorites. You can kind of just jump on a back line and That's remove a squishy from the game. Last time, right? I think so. 
I think they went leap. I, I, want, I, I mean, there's been so many games this last week for me to like keep everything straight. <laughs> but I feel like they did take a leap and were jumping onto the back line of Uwu and it was just absolutely devastating in some of these team fights. So definitely target ban coming out there. Maybe I'm misremembering, but either way, I remember the Sonya being a threat in the games mm -hmm. versus Uwu. So we're gonna see the white main. No planner grabbing up that white main. A great defensive healer in these team fights. And then, uh, yeah, Lee Ming getting picked up there to pair with the Sylvanas on the damage. And uh, Philippic grabbing that Zul. Finally, a Sylvanas player. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's a lot of damage into a mosh pit, into a sleep. Uh, you know, you got a Wailing Arrow there into all the Ming damage, and if Zul can join that team fight, he's going to be able to get, if he's going blue build, get all those auto attacks, in, and then picking up a Deathwing as the final pick of the match here. Um, not a bad pickup. I mean, Sylvanas does have the percent base damage if she wants it at level one. Um, but other than that, just a lot of, uh, I guess, free poke into the Deathwing. <laughs> Everyone's just in chat trying to tell us how to pronounce these names 10 different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling the hero names at this oh point. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't try to tell nobody. Okay, you can introduce Eric and Nephilim. I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, fine. All right, I'll do it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll do it. But if I mess it up, I blame <laughs> chat because they're telling me 10 different ways to say your names. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get flamed enough just doing Nexus Edge and we do, we do a pick them and like, I just want to talk about both teams. So I just try and pick them. Like the teams I'd want to pick to win, uh, you know, I just try and guess maybe which way Jinxie is going to pick one way or another. And then I get added at in chat, like <laughs> in other matches. And I'm just like maybe playing or even watching. And it's like, you didn't pick us to win. I'm like, I'm sorry. It's no offense. I like everybody. All right, here we are. Game number one Heroes. Arrogant Nephilim on the left hand side with Saigate on the Muradin, Dekiladin on the Deathwing. <laughs> Kime, I'm telling Kime? you, it's Kime. I'll Kime? say it. Kime on the map I'll, feel, I'll just do it for you. I'll tilt him. I'll tilt him, and I'll give you a Null pointer later. playing that white main and Triab well, on the Tychus. Ten seconds. Or sorry, oh. Rainer. My bad. <laughs> All right, over on the red side, four soak Evie the lane. We have Philippic on the Zul, Tornado on the Sylvanas. Uh, FOK spam. I'm not gonna try and butcher that one and say a swear. Uh, on the Decker, Dougals on the Lee Meng, and Kid on the ETC. Can we get a request for Arrogant Nephilim to make YouTube videos of how to pronounce their names? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I don't know if you watch uh, sports ball at all or football, um, but uh, like how they, they have like the players just say their name and then what college they go to. Like, maybe just do that. Just have them say their names and what role they play for the team. <laughs> All right, so we're probably gonna see Melthiel and Zul doing the double soak between mid and top. So that'll work out pretty well. Melthiel has good wave clear. Murda taking a good chunk of damage here. Getting healed up by White Mane. The nice thing about having a Melthiel is if he talented into it, which uh, looks like he did on a pale horse, he's gonna have those quick rotations between mid and top to help keep up with the soak that Zul has. Yeah, it's a good talent for the double soak, but I find myself wanting the other one. I mean, I guess maybe it could be different now that, uh, you know, Medallion is a thing, um, but Malfiel is susceptible. Actually, both these offlaners are susceptible to some ganks. So taking the speed boost whenever you need it on uh, one is one of my go-tos when I'm playing Malfiel. Um, but we're going to see Sylvanas opting for the stacking dagger build, <laughs> uh, which makes sense with that Deathwing, as well as uh, Scroll of Identity coming out to reduce that armor on that Deathwing as well. Just while you were talking about that, ETC tried to power slide onto the Muradin who had a Q at the same time, so they just stunned each other in the same spot. That's awesome. That's like a little Spider-Man pointing at each other meme. Mm -hmm. Level 4 is now picked up on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Power slide going out onto the Muradin, and he's going to use that Dorp Toss to get out of there. Stun going out from the Deathwing, connects onto the Deckard. He has tons of potions up and available though, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, and we have a pause. <laughs> they must have heard us. They must have caught up and they heard us saying their uh, their names terribly. <laughs> 
Let's just take a minute and look at these talents here. We did have Rainer Talon into Exterminator on level one. She's going to be able to do a little bit faster uh, minions, mercs, and monsters on this map. Um, as well, uh, Murden taking that level one Q quest, currently sitting on seven stacks of the baseline, six stacks on the level one quest. Interestingly enough, we see Sylvanas talenting into W build here, sitting on eight stacks already. Um, I usually... I mean, I play a lot of Sylvanas. I don't usually go stacking quests because you you kind of have a mage that's here to do the burst damage, and I like kind of going the more sustained, either going for the Q build or... Um, mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I'm blanking on that level one talent. Oh, uh, Affliction. That's it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing maybe because the new percent damage. Was... But yeah, yes. so here's the thing. You, if you guys don't know, because Deathwing is not affected by slows, if you talent into Overwhelming Affliction at level 1 on Sylvanas, you're not going to get the percent damage onto Deathwing. So, typically when I'm playing against a Deathwing as Sylvanas, I'll opt to go for the Q talent instead and get that extra spell damage from my other abilities. Um, since that only procs, that percent damage only procs if you have the slow from this three stacks onto the, um, onto the enemy, it won't proc on Deathwing, so you don't get percent damage. Good to know. Now, Decker talenting into uh, Scroll of Identify at level one. I knew that's what it was called, <laughs> but I second guessed myself. Already sitting at four stacks of the 14 unit to complete that one. And of course, we have ETC taking prog, prog Rock with four globes picked up already. Yeah, and we're going to see the Rejuvenation Potion coming out at 4 4. Deckard, you know, being able to um, restore some of that mana and a little bit of a heal over time. You don't necessarily see that one much, but we're seeing a couple different builds since Ruby got the nerf. Um, armored, I like Armored Talents as well, maybe going up against uh, the Rainer and then Deathwing going uh, heals on the auto attacks uh, would have been a bit good pickup, but I mean, to help the sustain for these long team fights, uh, Rejuve Potion definitely makes a lot of sense. It's interesting now with the nerfs to Deckard's Ruby and stuff and changes there, there's been a lot more variety of the level 4 talent pickup seen in these matches lately. Yeah, I'm a fan of Perfect Gems at 20 because you still get the CDR on the gems that you pick up later on. Um, but again, I guess it's uh, tomato tomato on what you like on on uh, Decker because he's that's kind of he's kind of like the Swiss Army knife because he can bring you know damage reduction, he can bring healing reduction, he can bring a stun, you know he's got AOE heals, roots, slows, sleeps, he just brings everything to uh, so much utility to some of these team fights and some of these matches. Yeah, um, one of the quests we did miss as well that I just noticed is we also saw Zul. He's talenting into jailers here, so he needs to spawn those eighty skeletal warriors. Um, and after that, his skeletal warriors are going to gain 25% movement speed and attack speed. So he's not going W build at all here. He's going uh, the little skeletal warriors build. The instead. skelly boys. Yeah. Which I get, it does help with the push from Zul. I mean, you do get the additional skeleton warriors to push that lane when you're rotating elsewhere. Um, you know, some hard CC coming out with the Deathwing and the Murd and to kind of lock Zul in when he's in trying to get those swipes on that team fight. So it allows him to kind of play a little bit more passively, uh, get the roots and more damage on anyone he hits with that root. Yeah, I do have to wonder how he would have done going W build and the sustain into this team, though, because they have quite a few melee on the side of Arrogant Nephilim, so he might have been able to stand there and hit them for a while. Um, but, I mean, obviously, it's risky. You, you're, like, you have to be in melee range. All right, it looks like everyone's good to go. Do you want to do a countdown and all on pause? Sure. I can't type in all chat though. Oh. Because I'm just an observer. All right. All right, power slide out onto that Murray. He's going to door toss out of there, and he lives right after the pause. He was ready to get out of there, preparing that entire break just to avoid death. <laughs> right, that E was probably held down the minute <laughs> you started counting. Yeah. <laughs> So we're actually going to see a four-man rotate up onto Kima. He's going to try to get that gank where he's fine. And the W Woo! is going to get kind of... He's going oh, to and actually... pops the gladi Gladiator's Medallion to avoid the root from Deckard as well. Yeah, pop that medallion. Pop the W. I forget what it's called. Uh, the 
strike to flip back over on the other side of the ETC at the same time he booped and kind of put him in a good position to kind of sneak away with his life there. But we're seeing that trade up top. Uh, Zul just getting really low, um, just trying to trade him where he doesn't want to be in uh, the opposite side of the lane. We're going to see the first set of uh, channels get started here. We're just going to see the, uh, the trade up top uh, as we see the fight right out down here in the bottom. Sun connecting onto the Li Ming and ETC there. Definitely just stepping up to kind of zone out the damage of Soak Every Lane. Power Slide connecting on to the Rainer. He's getting chunked down, looking to try and escape here, and he is going to be able to walk away. Li Ming and Silv also getting kind of low on the side of Soak Every Lane. But there we go. Arrogant Nephilim has managed to pick up that altar. Yep, all right. And the first... Uh... Objective is done two to one in favor of arrogant Nephilim here as we see this the uh, you know the double soakers get back to doing their thing and uh, the rotation down here but we're gonna see the sapper camps up in about 10 seconds uh, on the, the uh, on the right side and they are up now on the left side. Just another thing to mention here that I, I didn't notice when we were paused. Sylvanas opting not to take Merc Queen at level 4, instead talenting into Unstable Poison, which is going to allow those um, minions to kind of explode when they go down. Uh, but you kind of lose some value from those pumpkins doing it that way. Sometimes it works out better, though, because if you don't have the lane pressure and aren't able to push in the pumpkins, your Merc Queen talent can go basically no value from it, if that happens. Yeah, there's a lot of times where these, the, you know, these camps are just taken at the same time and just, you know, both teams kind of like just run into the middle here and both teams just kind of clear them. Um, so like you said, the wave clear could be kind of important, you know, especially with the Li Ming on the team as a source Power of the Power slide out onto that Muradin again. Just a lot of damage being dumped on him. He does land that stun, stun onto the ETC, looking to back out his trait proc here. So he's healing up. And like you said, team just clearing out the pumpkins here. Yeah, I still, it's it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's really hard to push those pumpkins in, but you always got to think that there's going to be an opportunity where you t win a team fight and could steal their camp and push it in immediately. And with the buff pumpkins from a Merc Queen trait, you're going to end up taking, you like you would have got that whole wall down easily there. Yeah, I think one set of pumpkins with a Merc Queen takes about, I want to say about 75% of uh, Bell Tower uh, in health. In health. Deathwing landing into the back line of Soak Every Lane. Sitting back here now looking to use some abilities. Connects that Q onto the Lee Ming, takes a nice bit of damage onto her. Out comes a Cataclysm. It's going to hit a few members of Soak Every Lane. Murden getting quite low. Deathwing as well. In comes the Zul. Looking to do what he can. White Mane just healing up. Trying to keep her team alive best as they can. We have the Root connecting onto the Mal Malthiel. Followed up by the Power Slide and he falls. Definitely managing to survive through that. It did look a little dangerous there for a second, but the tower's gonna go over to the side of Soak Every Lane. Now 32 to 32 on core damage. Yeah, it got a little scary there, but great positioning on the side of Arrogant Nephilim uh, just to help kill uh, kill, uh, kill him in. Sneak out of there with his health. Well, oh, power's like going on to the Murden immediately after using his Dwarf Toss, so he doesn't have an escape here. He, he could be a kill target if they can focus him down fast enough, but it looks like he's gonna be able to walk away and survive that one. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see Festering Wounds coming out here. So we're going to see the full dagger build coming out from the Sylvanas with Wailing Arrow. Uh, we're going to see Stay a While and Listen. We're going to see Disintegrate, Mosh Pit, and Poison Nova on the side of Soak Every Lane. I think these are pretty standard pickups here. ETC getting caught under the heap here, taking a bit of damage. Sylvanas out of mana just used her banshees and has no escape here so she's gonna need some help from her team she wants to survive here there's a potion there ready for her to pick but Murden lands the stun onto her and she falls getting picked off by the rainer rest of the team getting chased down now now behind their heap wall looking to defend the push from arrogant nephilim Yeah, as we see the teams just getting back to doing their thing, Hizul does have a little bit of the advantage on the double soak game, but that is because Malfiel unfortunately got caught there in that last team fight on the bottom uh, objective uh, and missing a couple uh, couple minions there, but not that uh, Kime can't catch back up. If you can even get a 1v1 trade and a kill onto Zul, it'll definitely help uh, Arrogant Nephilim out. 
Siege Camp's getting picked up now. Arrogant Nephilim capping theirs. Murden keeping an eye on the side of Soak Every Lane. It looks like they're going to be able to get that, though, without any contests from the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Power Slide connecting out onto the Murden again. He has that Dwarf to Toss up. Going to be able to walk away. Deathwing landing in the back line of Soak Every Lane. Really looking to walk away here. Um, Rainer trying to pick up that bottom altar. Mid one just being contested by the two teams here. He does manage to grab that interrupt coming out from the Murden landing. He's done onto the Zool. Power slide going out. We have the Mosh landing onto White Bane in the back line. Cataclysm coming out from the Deathwing Sail while I'm listen. Connecting onto a couple members of Arrogant Nephilim. And down goes the ETC and all of this. Followed up by the Sylvanas and Zool getting picked off almost at the same time, but not for free. Deathwing does fall. Still a three for one in favor of Arrogant Nephilim here. They're going to be able to secure that mid altar and now score is going to be 24 to 32 in favor of arrogant nephilim yeah trey trying to finish off doubles underneath that tower but not being able to connect with that cube but we're going to see just them continue to push down here in the bot about half health on this bell tower try and claim it for their team and be able to hold it for the rest of the match I do have to say, after seeing these two teams already in practice, I kind I was kind of thinking that Soak Every Lane was going to be the more dominant team, but right now it really feels like Arrogant Nephilim is in charge of this game. Oh, we're going to see a three-man stun coming out there. On to Soak Every Lane. Segata getting really low there. Does he have the leap out? He's going to be able to do that. Uh, we're going to see the Roger Cube coming out to try and slow down. Arrogant Nephilim, we're going to see the Dorito coming out as well. Sekatai real low again, trying to get pokes in. Is the Lee Mang, but unsuccessful with connecting to that Murden. And then we're going to see Hilladin swapping over uh, positions, stances. And then we are, there is the uh, 1v1 trade. Uh, Kime being able to lock down Zul there right underneath his tower. I always feel bad for missing kills in the solo lane. It's hard to, to know whether you should be watching the four-man brawl going down or what's going on in the 1v1, but... Um, yeah, Zul getting picked off on the side of Soak Every Lane by the Malthiel. So Malthiel doing quite a good job holding his own against that Zul. Just want to take a look at this uh, siege damage and stuff. We have Malthiel with 106, 107k siege damage already to Zul's 77. So definitely doing a good job. <laughs> Slide coming out onto trade. Then we get boot back. He's gonna pop the unstoppable there, but get wall blocked into that. We're gonna see the resets coming out onto Lee Ming. We're gonna see Tornado E in to try and chase down no, no pointer there, but we're gonna see Deathwing drop back down to try and help defend the white man there. The slide's gonna come out to maybe try and get on the other side of Deathwing, but unfortunately, none of that good stuff works onto that big old dragon. And we're gonna see the end base coming out for <laughs> Soak Every Lane. It's almost like they heard me say. Um, arrogant Nephilim feels like they're in charge here, and then they're just like, nah, nah, nah. No, yeah. watch this. We're going to take this camp. We're running this game now. Mm. All right, and in all of that good stuff, uh, they, we were able to take the bottom of the tower. We're going to see them rotate back. Sylvanas is doing what she does fantastically, using that black arrow to shut this down. But Deathwing is uh, not going to give this up for free. He's going to cataclysm in there, laying the sun onto that Sylvanas. Just orbs just being lobbed in onto this Deathwing, who is getting awfully low. And poor White Mane's not able to do anything for him, so he's probably going to have to back and or fly here. But he's going to fly, and that is, you know, without Deathwing for at least eight seconds here to see if uh, they can pressure this bottom bell tower it's pretty low already and they do have that poke from the Li main to try and finish that off uh like you said sylvana's trade already used so they don't have that up and available quite yet but oh actually it is back up now so they're gonna be able to siege in try and get this keep back and we have a sail wild and listen coming out connecting on to white main and the murden murden getting face melted but it doesn't matter. He wants to stay in the back line anyway. Looking to try and get a bit of damage onto the Sylvanas. And now looking to get out of there. Stun landing onto the Rainer. And then again, looks... Kime just taking down that Zul. But he's going to have to back from this objective. But he's going to make it back in time with that Pale Horse. Let's see if he heads to the other side or if he heads to his own side. But it looks like he's going to check the bush and just see if anyone's going to rotate up on him. Sylvanas is going to rotate up on that one. So we're going to see the trade on top as we see uh, Null Pointer channeling the bottom objective. And it's going to be a 2-1 to one trade on the tower shots in favor of Arrogant Nephilim. Sapper is getting picked up by the side of Soak Every Lane. 
Again, they're just trying to defend this bottom keep. Sorry, <laughs> hiccup to the middle of that. Uh, just trying to defend the bottom oh, no. keep there and push in those sappers. Uh, they need to be careful though. They are down Sylvanas here, so it's a 3v4 for a moment. She is here now. Stun connects onto the ETC from the Deathwing. Power slide in. Doesn't quite hit anyone on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Level 16's online for both teams now. We have Sylvanas opting to go with the healing. Which I think is going to be a pretty standard pickup now on the Sylvanas since you don't need to talent into the Unstoppable since you have a Gladiator's Medallion to use. Unless you really, really uh, like a lot of CC on the enemy team. Yeah, and take a look at the stack. She has 59 uh, so far. I'm wondering if she's having a hard time stepping up with all of that CC and Murden just kind of in her face the entire game. But stay well, Wilson coming out. He's going to pop the Avatar, but it's not going to be enough for him. We're going to see the Poison Nova coming out, just landing a ton of damage down there. But Deckard has the potion set up that way. We're going to see the ult coming down from the White Mage just to top uh, the rest of Arrogant Nephilim off as they uh, rotate onto the mid here. And uh, Spam and Kid both getting away with their lives. Yeah, Malthiel getting another stack onto the Li Ming there for his last raid. It's currently sitting at four stacks. So if he wants, he can probably talent into the level 20 upgrade. He only needs one more for that to be completed. It does look like we're going to see Arrogant Nephilim pushing in that bottom keep once again, taking control over there. Uh, probably looking to cap that before they get the, the shrine for extra tower or extra core damage. We are 25 to 12 on core shots, and that seems to be what, exactly what they're going to do. Nobody channeling it quite yet. Oh, actually... Hmm. Yeah, I think they're going to take the, the opportunity now while, uh, you know, two people were still down on the side of Soak every lane, but they're going to have those sappers, so they're probably going to cap this and then maybe rotate back down to secure that. Uh, but we're going to see them split, but here comes the Deathwing. Yeah, Deathwing exactly just kind of cues from safety onto this keep and maybe get out of there without dying. I mean, so right now, Soak Every Lane a little bit behind, but I I mean, they're scaling, right? <laughs> they have the Sylvanas yeah. W, so maybe they're going to be able to turn this around. 25 to 8 on core shots. Um, but the thing is, this is Towers of Doom. This is the map where comebacks are always a possibility. It is definitely getting to be a little bit of a tricky situation for them here, as level 20s are about to be approached by Arrogant Nephilim, uh, and they're still quite a ways off from reaching it themselves. Yeah, like you said, anything can happen on this map. What they're going to probably have to do is they're, they're going to try and grab their sapper camps, take down, take back this bottom. We're going to see Zul rotate in this, try and make it a 5v4. Uh, and then maybe potentially after this, they should rotate up on Kime there and uh, try and give an advantage back over to Zul um, to catch 20s for their team. See here, if if Sylvanas had talented into Merc Queen, that keep would be dead right now. They wouldn't have this, like this window right here where it's not dead and so uh or arrogant nephilim could have looked to engage hopefully the sylvanas player doesn't think i'm picking on them because I, I i'm really not <laughs> No, but I, I, like you said, but outside, I think the thought process maybe there is outside of Zul. I think she is the only source of wave clear, but we're going to see them rotate up onto the boss here. Uh, maybe just give, you know, four shots for four shots, not, not allowing Arrogant Nephilim to get both of these and end the game with eight. So they're just going to opt for one or the other, but we're going to also give up not only four shots, but that bottom bell tower as well. I think that's a play that we needed to see from Soak Every Lane here. They're taking that win condition off the map from Arrogant Nephilim. Um, and choosing not to fight down their level 20s. They're so close to hitting it here. They need to be a bit careful. I'd hate to see them lose a fight right now. They're so close to hitting that level 20. Stun, four-man stun from that Deathwing. Down goes the Zul on the side of Soak Every Lane. Stay a while and listen comes out, but it's not quite enough to keep them alive. They're going to be down one member. Level 20 is still not quite online for the side of Soak Every Lane. Sapper is looking to be picked up now by Arrogant Nephilim if they walk these in in the bottom lane. They're only getting one shot on the core. Soak every lane trying to get this bottom keep back. Here comes the Deathwing landing into the back line of Soak every lane. 
Sylvanas managed to Banshee out of there, though, and saved herself from a little bit of trouble. Rainer stepping up, trying to get what damage he can out onto the back line of Soak Every Lane. They got that keep so low, but not quite able to secure it. Level 20s are online now. We do have ETC actually opting to Talent into Bolt of the Storm. Looking for that Rainer pick here. He's going to be able to walk away, unfortunately. And now lots of damage coming out from the Malthiel and Deathwing. Down goes the ETC, as well as the Sylvanas. Zul just spawning back from the kill they got on a mid. And there we go. Two pumpkins walked in. Now 2-21 to 21 on the favor of Arrogant Nephilim. Malthiel already up on that top tower, ready to channel. I don't think anyone's going to get there in time to interrupt him. And this is going to be game number one, going over to the side of Arrogant Nephilim. GG's coming out there. All right, I have to say, Arrogant Nephilim kind of showing what they're made of here in this game. Really just strong showing overall in this first game. 12 to 4 for kills here. Uh, still, yeah. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Dax? It's, it was really close. You know, I mean, both both teams had kind of the same strategy. Uh, I just think, unfortunately, with those uh, 1v1 kills on the Zul and then not being able to um, peel off and catch, I think some of that kind of put um, Soak Every Lane kind of behind the eight ball for a little while. And then just, I think it kind of snowballed from there. Yeah, uh, I think, too, the Malthiel being able to hold in his own in the solo lane and getting so many picks onto the Zool. This is what I was saying at the beginning of the match. That I kind of like playing the off lane because if you can manage to win it and you're double soaking on top of that and just getting ahead on the XP, it really helps out the format. And we saw that here. Melthiel soaking 29k in XP over Zool's 22. And usually Zool is the double soaker for this map that you like to see people grab. Um, also managing to pull out 200k in siege damage as well. <clears throat> Yeah, all right. And it looks like uh the we are the lobby is up for game number two. And it looks like we are going to Battlefield of Eternity. All right, soak every lane taking us to Battlefield of Eternity for game number two. Let me just update this real quick and we can give you a rundown of how we got where we are. Uh, game number one, going over to the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Got to update that real quick. All right, let's take a look at these maps and, and see how we got here and where we're going. All right, game number one, played on Towers of Doom. The win picked up by Arrogant Nephilim. They did pick that map after Soak Every Lane opted to go with first pick option when winning the coin toss. We also saw Dragonshire and Braxis Holdout being banned out from Soak Every Lane and Cursed Hollow and Hanamura banned on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. So game number two here, it looks like we have um, Soak Every Lane opting for map pick instead of taking the first pick option. Uh, and bringing us to Battlefield of Eternity. So they must have a game plan here if they decided to go with map pick over first pick. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I mean, I like, <laughs> it's, it, you know, it could just be one of those things. I mean, this is a team, a, a, definitely a team fighting map. Uh, you, you definitely see a lot of uh, thrall in the four man with, uh, with, uh, they call it trash lightning, but crash lightning gets a ton of value um, with thrall in the four man can follow up on uh, any sort of CC that the, you know, the tank wants to bring out here. Um, yeah. I think this is just, maybe they have something in their, uh, their head that they want to do that they know that they're good at and just, you know, give them the best advantage to uh, win this game. All right. We are going to get into game number two here. As I said, battlefield of eternity picked by soak every lane. Let's get into this. Maybe I started this too soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it's they right. gave it the kind three, of wants two, to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you know, the map plays when it wants to play. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know Malfield's good, secretly good on this map, so we may see a Malfield ban this time, the respect ban onto Kime. Um, Asonia, she's, you know, depending on the build, but she's really good on this, uh, sneakily good uh, as well. Yeah, we did see Arrogant Nephilim ban at the Chromie first game. That might be something they might want to get rid of again here, just because she has such good poke damage onto the Immortal that if even if you're playing the defense role, she still might be able to get a decent amount of damage and finish off Immortals at a, at a nice distance. But do we get to see... Was that the last game? Or is it this game? The Sergeant Hammer player. I think that was last game. I think it was uh, the first of the Yeah, that the was first the first the series. Yeah. We never did uh, get to see the hammer, but... We we didn't. But uh, yeah, just those heroes that can poke from you know safety on the side, of, like depending on where the immortals are, uh, from uh, you know the, the, the bruiser area. They don't have to really be in too involved and kind of, you know, like you said, get that free poke and finish off those immortals. All right, ETC being banned on the side of Soak Every Lane. They did pick up the ETC last game, so it looks like they don't want it this game. Going to go for something else here. Grey Mane being banned on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, these are just pretty standard bans for Battlefield of Eternity. Don't know if they're necessarily targeting anyone. Just good picks for Burn on the Immortal. And team fights in general, too, around the Immortal, I think. And then Cassia. <clears throat> Charge Strikes just gets a ton of value on that Immortal as well with that bonus damage on, I think it's every third auto attack. Yeah. So first pick coming out here, we could see a Rainer, we could see a Vala, a Lunara. Li Ming is still on the board here. Uh, Silk Evelyn did have it last game, and then we're going to see to kill it in on that Rainer. Did Killadin play Rainer in the first game? No, uh, De Killadin played the uh, Deathwing in, in the yeah, first game. Yeah, I was going to say... Trabe, I, Trabe was on the, on the Rainer. I was going to say, I, I don't think he was on it the first game. Uh, so a little bit of roll swap here. Showing a little bit how flex they are. Diablo getting picked up on the side of Soak Every Lane. I like a Diablo on this map. And the Orphea being picked up as well. Um, Eric and Nephilim actually banned Orphea in the first round of game number one. So it looked like they were trying to target ban here, but opting not to take it away this time. So it is up and available and doubles did lock that one in. Let the Inquisition commence. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's available, play it if you got it. I mean, I know Orphea is really good, can sustain for absolute days and a great combo with just those two heroes, just Diablo and Orphea. Uh, but then we're gonna see, you know, Null Pointer being able to come out uh, here with that white main again, uh, these tight choke points. Um, just being able to drop that uh, that damage alt and just laugh her way to the <laughs> bank. <laughs> Garage ban. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not surprised here. I would be banning a tank if I were on the side of Soak Every Lane right now. Arrogant Nephilim, not yet locked one in. Yeah, and Garrosh is a good counter to Diablo. You know, you kind of dive in to maybe get a pick, and then you're yeeted over a wall. <laughs> yeah. There's not much you can not much you can do from that point on. Maybe an AA damage or a healer ban. That's going to be the healer, Anna. Which, you know, a great combo would be the uh, nano boost with the Orphea. So I yeah. don't, I don't uh, hate that ban at all whatsoever. But uh, just taking a look at the profile here, Dubles does have a 75% uh, win rate on Orphea this season. All right, still need a healer on the side of Soak Every Lane. I guess they're going to opt to last pick that. Instead, going for some big immortal burn damage here. The Artan is getting picked up and the Vala. Yeah, uh, I'm expecting to see spam on the Rhaegar. We could see a Bloodlust comp here, auto attack Diablo, or if he wants to auto attack to keep herself sustained up, we could see Artanis and Vala there as well. So it looks like the makings of a Bloodlust comp right there. Yeah, maybe. You're not wrong. I mean, Bloodlust a little bit fallen out of the meta, but I'm still seeing teams occasionally talent into it. Joanna and Imperius getting picked up. So if they do go that Bloodlust, at least they have some blinds to kind of counter it. Um, Imperius 
Ugh, Imperius. He, I like him here because there's going to be a lot of team fighting, so you don't have to worry about the lane soak because he kind of a little bit weaker in wave clear and, and soaking that way. But, man, you can Renown, just... His Qs can just absolutely wreck mm -hmm. if you have the right kind of follow-up into it. And he does so much damage. I feel like he's just... For a bruiser, he, he really hurts, you know? Yeah, and it's going to pair nicely with that Rainer. I mean, just the two of them alone have the slows and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. all the damage. Well, he's... You know, Rainer on this map, though, generally wants to probably go Exterminator, so not getting that damage proc on the ace in the hole. But like you said, Mephisto has all the poke in the world. Rainer can finish off anybody. And then just that double front line with uh, Imperius and Johanna. All right, here we are going into game number two. Again, this is on Battlefield of Eternity. Game number one. One by Arrogant Nephilim on Towers of Doom. Game number two, Soak Every Lane has picked Battlefield of Eternity. Coming in with a game plan with that Immortal Burn heroes being picked up on their side. Yeah, it's the tale of, you know, two comps here. What both, uh, you know, two strats is, you know, the team fight or the burn. Um, so it looks like on the right-hand side, what, what uh, Soak Every Lane wants to do is... Uh, the burn side of things while on the side of Arrogant Nephilim they kind of want to you know they want to team wipe and then they're going to put Rainer on uh, the Immortal to finish it off and maybe push in a different lane well here we are on the left hand side Arrogant Nephilim with the Null Pointer on the white main to kill it in playing the Rainer Sagatai on the Joanna Triab on the Mephisto and Kikai Ku Kime on the Imperial. there you go <laughs> and on the red side, we got Philippic on the Artanis, Tornado on the Vala, Spam on the Malfurion, Doubles on Matt Orphea, and Kid on Dibbles. I want Doubles on Dibbles. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <clears throat> Crushinator, how are you doing? Kind of what we expected here, Artanis and Furious in the top lane. Everybody else in the four man bottom. Yep, so we're gonna see a Q build coming out. <laughs> I think we both expected that. Uh, it did get a little bit of a nerf on seven, uh, flash of anger, but you know, it still seems to be the broken uh, talent. And we will see uh, Laws of Hope on the Johanna. I love that talent. Uh, got scolded at that by a lot of coaches for not taking uh, the trait talent. Uh, but now it is, and we're going to see just that pick, that quick pick onto the Orphea in the bot lane. Yeah, Orphea playing very aggressively there, stepping up to try and get a kill and damage onto the back line of Arrogant Nephilim, but pays for it. She does fall, which gives Arrogant Nephilim the opportunity to grab this bottom siege camp. Let's see top. There's a fight going on over the top camp here. Imperius lands the stun onto the Artanis. Here comes Zavala to back him up, though. Looking for that swap, but doesn't have it up. He's going to be able to walk away. Vala and Artanis able to get the top siege camp. So it's going to work out that bottom siege camp going over to the side of Arrogant Nephilim, but top one getting grabbed by Soak Every Lane. Yeah, and this is a great great pickup here. We're going to see the swap onto Kimei there. He's going to take some spears from the Goatman, and he's going to get low there, but he's going to be able to keep himself alive for just a little bit longer. But he is going to go down as we miss a kill onto the Mephisto in the bot lane there as well. Maybe some minions or a tower kill not being able to blink out there fast enough. But some, they're going to see the pressure in the top lane, both Vala and Artanis being able to Hold just produce on. so much siege damage. Soak every lane just one a 4v3 in the bottom lane to get that pick onto Mephisto what yeah so I'm guessing is he probably kind of got caught from probably Diablo maybe maybe like the E into a Q oh, and you know what you can do if you're if you can time it properly you can actually get the Diablo flip animation to occur right before he blinks back but as he blinks back so it still counts as flipping him if he like shades in do you know what I mean? Mm, it's yeah. really tricky to pull off, but you can do it on Diablo. Hmm. So that's probably what happens. Uh, so we're gonna see the uh, Doubles just holding out on this point, probably to about four or five seconds left. But that's this is probably what this is what they need to do uh, into Kime on Imperius because his uh, his uh, cam clear is absolute just just D tier can't do it. So if they have lanes, <laughs> keep pushing in in his lanes. They're gonna have to rotate somebody else up, probably Rainer to deal with it. 
Um, and that, that's just how they're going to have to play this game. I think it's just keep constant pressure. Take a tie getting caught out in the back line here with Pops the trade is going to be able to walk away. The help of the Imperius landing a stun here. They're looking to clear out that bottom lane. Rainer on the top of Mortal right now, just trying to get what damage he can done while the rest of his team plays the defense position. Swap landing onto the white main. Diablo flipping and stunning the white main. Now the rest of the team here to help follow up. Looks like she is going to fall here. Now the burn can start on the side of Soak Every Lane. Again, Rainer just on that Immortal the entire time. They're going to beat him to halftime. Imperius cleaning up the top lane. As best as he can, absolutely. We'll yeah. see Rainer rotate up there and just help him finish that off. But they're going to catch that way back up real quick uh, with them having to deal with that camp in the top lane. And the race is better on the side of Soak Every Lane. And it's going to be a close one, but I think it's going to come down to Soak Every Lane for the first objective. Yeah, unfortunately, Rain are going to help help clear the top lane with Imperius left a lot of their burn uh, away from the Immortal when they respond after the halftime there. So that kind of cost them the race and that first Immortal will be going over to the side of Soak Every Lane. It's going to be sieging in the bottom lane. Level 7 is now up and available as well for the side of Soak Every Lane. You see Vala now kind of coming online with that repeating arrow. So she's going to have the vault come off cooldown after, or the um, hungering arrow come off cooldown after vaulting. Yep, and we're going to see, you know, part of that wall already coming down. We're going to see a Q into Kime there, but uh, he's kind of on his back foot there in the top lane uh, as we push here onto the fort in the bot lane. Joanna having to use up her trait and her gladiator's medallion to avoid dying there and still getting caught in a root after all of that. So down she's going to fall here with the stunts from the Diablo, Volo damage to follow up. Orphea getting kind of low, needs to be a bit careful sticking around here as Mephisto can kind of pop in and chunk out a lot of damage here. Now Vala getting low as well. And then just Trave with that electric hula hoop just doing so much damage. I see Johanna slowly rotating back in here. Then, And unfortunately, Arrogant Nephilim not able to do anything without their frontliner, so they're going to have to fork out of this camp. Great job checking the uh, the bush there for any sort of bush ganks. I want to see this Diablo land the, the Shade of Mephisto flip and time it well enough that he ends up back in the back line even after he kind of blinks out. It's, it's really weird and I feel like it shouldn't work that way, but it does. That's kind of like, like when you do the charge on him with a teleport. You, know, you, you, yeah, you push it, it and it's going off, yeah. It, it's really, it's hard timing to get down, but it's definitely something that you can pull off and, and it'll be interesting to see if he does manage it or if he's just not even going to try to flip the Mephisto knowing that he's going to most of the time probably make it back. Like you, you really have to know the timing and, and of Mephisto's shade of Mephisto <laughs> to be able to do it. Yeah, I'm curious to see it, but like it's like one of those weird interactions, kind of like uh, Barry mm -hmm. in charge and you just end up somewhere where you really don't want to be because yeah. it's just, you can't do anything about it. Artan is getting a little bit caught out here. Lands a swap onto the Rainer to try and get himself out, but it's not going to work. He's going to end up falling here. The kill it and taking a lot of damage. Needs to be a bit careful. Backing up. Pops his self heal. Rest of Soak Every Lane now looking to play on the defense here. Level 10 is a little bit closer for them than Arrogant Nephilim. They could look to just back up and get that level 10 now. Yeah, they can slow play this. Uh, Artanis will be back in time for the halftime, but we're going to see Imperius kind of get stuck in that Immortal Sun. The hard part about fighting underneath your opponent's objective here is they do add that element of the CC. Level 10's almost online for Soak Every Lane. Vala getting quite low from the poke from the Mephisto, coming in with his Lightning Nova on the Shade of Mephisto. I like that his talent is called Shade of Mephisto and his name's Mephisto. I just feel like mm -hmm. I'm saying Mephisto and now it's starting to sound weird. It's just say it on repeat <laughs> over and over again. Level 10's online for Soak Every Lane. Artanis going with that Suppression Pulse. Vala, Reign of Vengeance, the um, Tranquility coming out from the Malfurion. Crushing Jaws from the Orphea and Apoc from the Diablo. Level 10's now online to the side of Arrogant Nephilim as well. Durance of Hate getting picked up by the Mephisto. Rainer's Raiders by the Rainer, Blessed Shield by the Joanna. We have the Divine Reckoning from the White Mane and Angelic Armaments from the Imperius. Crushing Jaws goes out, connects onto one member on the side of Arrogant Nephilim and Soak Every Lane now getting into a sticky situation. Beautiful Durance getting hit here with the Immortal Stun underneath it all. Down goes the Artanis Diablo picked off as well. 
rest of the team looking to back out here. Imperius almost getting the pick onto the Vala, but she's going to be able to escape. Looking to back in the top lane. Orpheus sticking around, needs to be a bit careful. But she should and get out all the okay. while, that bot camp, that bruiser camp that they took kind of like right at the beginning of this is getting so much value in the bottom. It looks like they're going to forego this one and just rotate down and maybe try and save their fort, but I don't know if Diablo has enough clear uh, to make that happen. And they managed to do a lot of damage too onto these immortals, but Raynor is on that bottom immortal right now, um, getting that done for the side of Eric and Nephilim, but White Mane getting caught out position with the Artana swap. Diablo there to follow up, get the stun, and she does get picked off. So now down a member on the side of Aragon Nephilim for this immortal pu push. Maybe two, Joanna having to use her blessed shield here, but Diablo queuing and flipping her right back into the fight, and down she goes as well. So they might be able to have a little bit of free defense onto this immortal. Uh, someone's also going to have to deal with that bottom lane is getting pushed in a little bit. It was cleared out from the towers, uh, but you don't want to leave it for too long because there is going to be periodic Kata spawning in that lane now that the fort is taken down. Yeah, great defense there. You know, they're going to maybe lose the top wall here in the first objective, but we're going to see uh, Arrogant Nephilim position in the bot for maybe a game on this Orphea if she steps up a little further. Let's see if he can make a land the queue here, which a little wide right there. We should will be able to wiggle out of there, but they'll probably just rotate down on this bot camp to get some more pressure <laughs> on that bottom keep. I was looking a little scary there for a second for that Orphea, but yeah, she manages to get out. Artanis now picking up the top siege camp. Um, Arrogant Nephilim going for that bottom one right now. Pretty even on XP, on structures. Um, so yeah, right now it's kind of anyone's game. No one really ahead in this. Yeah, absolutely. And it just was, it's funny is that, you know, that Imperius, you think you're kind of out of range of that Q and somehow just like, you know, just a hair on the tip of that thing and you get caught in it and then just absolutely just Arrogant Nephilim wanted to try and catch that Artanis on rotation. They all set up in the bush here hoping he would show, but he rotated safely and is now looking to join his team, kind of keeping vision down here um, for Arrogant Nephilim. But he has that now. They're showing top. They're pushing in the top fort and they're just going to end up trading forts here. Yeah, not a bad play. Let's see if they want to push a little bit further onto that. The bruisers are up on the right-hand side. Let's see if we maybe try and get an invade on that. But look, we're going to see a team fight here breaking out. 13's not quite online for Arrogant and Eflon, but they are online now. So we're going to see Sekatai just try to face check in that bush. She's going to get road rooted, blown up. We're going to see the shield come out, saving her a little bit. And she is going to be sneak away, but they're going to forego this bruiser camp here. Wow. Um, have to clear that up. Joe just really getting burst down so fast. Again, she had to use her trace, so that unstoppable down for a bit, and the Gladiator's Medallion and her Blessed Shield all being blown just to get herself out of that situation. Yeah, real close, but you know what? Just, you know, you don't get the invade on the camp, but you, you do have every member alive for this team fight. Here goes Soak Every Lane going straight onto the burn. It's gross <laughs> how much <laughs> burn that they really have. So we're going to have to see uh, Eric and Nephilim come out here and uh, just try and maybe get a pick or two. They're actually going to be playing aggressively here, trying to look for the fight under the enemy immortal. It's not going to work out for them. Down goes two members of Eric and Nephilim. Rainer getting quite low as well. He's going to fall. Blessed Shield coming out to... to um, Oh my goodness. Blessed Shield coming out to... <laughs> to stun and make some space to escape. <laughs> yep, absolutely get, being able to get that shield out for the peel uh, for their team. But we're going to see another Bruiser camp picked up here. We're going to see <laughs> Johanna and Trave go up to clear that top camp there. But we're going to see the Bruiser camp go bottom. And uh, looks like the wall is partially down there. So it looks like this immortal is going to go to the bot lane with that other camp. So we may see a I, win I don't know here. why the word peel was just blanking in my head there. <laughs> like, well, it happened to me in the first game. Do? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Odin. I couldn't think of Commander <laughs> Odin for the life of me. That's, you know, the big shooty robot alt. I, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, a little bit greedy of an engage by Arrogant Nephilim. Uh, definitely risky to go fight underneath the enemies immortal there. Didn't pan out for them. They got a nice, healthy Immortal with shields pushing in on this bottom keep now. Cool cats and kittens. Oh, sorry, soak every lane. <laughs> Almost getting that level 16. 
there it is online with the shield still on the immortal here. So the great poke coming out. They're gonna be able to defend this uh, pretty well here. Uh, just trying to do the best in position, but here we go. We're gonna see the APOC combo coming out onto the Rainer. He's gonna get locked up into inside every single thing there. We're gonna see Mephisto's all coming in. Everybody on the side of Arrogant Nephilim gets getting really low. Kid getting really low as well. Has the soul. It's gonna be able to wall back there, but they're getting placed back there. But we're gonna see the Vala ult coming up into lock up that Mephisto. Portal? I think this, this is, is a really call. healthy immortal with four members down on the side of Arrogant Ethelum. But everybody is a little bit low here. Uh, you know, the without you know the non It doesn't matter though, all they have is white main yeah. up to do any damage to these low teammates. So 14 minute game on the dot, going over to soak every lane. GG's coming out there. I, the only thing I thought may have swung in their favor there for Arrogant Nephilim was that they were still, uh, their death timers were still pretty 16. I thought they were going to come back maybe quick enough, but uh, just, you know, I guess the, the overall siege and Immortal Burn was just too much to, uh, to handle for Arrogant Nephilim. Well, that means we're going to a game number three here. <laughs> what everybody in the chat always wants to see is a game three. They always want to see a good series here. Um, but yeah, just a tremendous amount of damage coming out by Trabe on that Mephisto. Um, Rainer doing their thing as well. And I just think maybe the, just being able to burst damage to maybe, uh, you know, steal a kill. Um, and Malfurion was able to, excuse me, just double the healing out uh, on that white main. Um, just because of, you know, it was all poke damage and he can just kind of land some, uh, land some W's on some moon fires and just top his team off. Mm -hmm. Totally different game this time. I mean, we saw in game number one on Towers of Doom, uh, Arrogant Nephilim really kind of controlling that one and, and winning the game with like 20 shots on their core to spare. Game, or in game number one. And in game number two here, we see the reverse. Um, Soak every lane showing up and this time four to 13 in kills uh, and just being quite um oh my goodness it's been a long night <laughs> being quite dominant here in the second showing that's what i'm going for yeah i mean the kid on that diablo was really like just really impressive you know be able to get the apoc in those tight little choke points and not allowing you know really anyone on arrogant nephilim to kind of be able to push their buttons because they were just able to, orphea was able to do she went crushing jaw so you know one or the other into that giant combo and then there's all of the damage just getting dumped into one particular area uh mm -hmm. and just unfortunately white main you know being stunned she can't push her buttons um to top the team off yeah i uh, mephisto did a good job i feel like in this match he had like, a couple really nice durances that they just weren't able to find the picks off of um I mean, I, I think it's definitely a comp that could work for them going forward. It just didn't work out here. I, I, I think just taking that fight under that last immortal made it a little bit of a tricky uh, situation for them. Yeah, that seems more like maybe a, a, a team comp, maybe f maybe for this map or maybe like a Volskaya, uh, more team fighting map versus. Um, I mean, that one is kind of team fighty, but uh, less choke points. And, uh, you know, they can get the blink in and get a lot of that stuff done. But I'm just, I don't know. They probably ran that before. I mean, all good heroes, you know, they're doing their thing. Well, here's the thing is they they picked that map. So they were going, they had a strategy in mind here. They knew what they were doing. Uh, obviously, they're comfortable on that map. So it's not surprising that they pull out the win here necessarily. Uh, game number three, we are going to be going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. This one being picked by um, Soak Every Lane as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, Let's another just take Diablo a look. I know we have some people asking in chat what's been banned. Okay, so game number one, we went to Towers of Doom. That was won by Arrogant Nephilim. Second game, Battlefield of Eternity. That one being won by Soak Every Lane. Uh, map bans here. We did see Soak Every Lane ban out Dragonshire and Braxis, as well as Hanamura and Towers of Doom being banned out by Arrogant Nephilim. Yeah, so another wave clear map here. You know, another great tiny choke point map for Diablo. Could see the Diablo band. Uh, I don't think the Orphea was too much of a factor. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe they let that slide through again. But again, just with the win rate uh, even higher now. Um, since, since they didn't uh, secure that win. Maybe a 78 to 80% win rate on Orphea this season. 
And she had some nice crushing jaws, but I just think in, in general their team was able to follow up. Uh, if anything, I might be looking to ban out the Diablo. Uh, there was a couple times there where he was just able to dive onto that white main and push her way out of position. Let's let them know that we're ready here for game number three. We All can get right. into this. Three, two, one, and we're off. So Tomb of the Spider Queen, what do you like to draft here, Jazz? Um, hmm. Wave clear. Tomb of the spider queen. Wave clear is not bad. So something like a, a Jaina that can just easily rotate between mid and top. She's able to finish out her globe quest pretty quickly and clear out the waves. Uh, Sylvanas can be pretty decent. Shut down some forts to get some value with the spider queen. Uh, any tank that can kind of pick off people and displace them on the rotation, maybe like a Garrosh, um, to kind of just sit and keep vision on the enemy's side for when they rotate to toss them into your, your team for picks. Um, Reg is a popular pick on Tomb. He can Molten Core in the mid-keep for a good defense on the spiders. Uh, what else? That, that's, that's the things that are coming to mind right away off the top of my head. Yep, and we're going to see the standard bands coming out here, the respect bands coming out from either side of the teams, but I am with you. Um, you know, possibly a Gul'dan, but like any mage that has a great wave clear tanks, you know, Johanna can be a priority on this map. Um, you know, again, just like BOE, you can kind of draft a team fight uh, comp because, you know, if they don't have any spider butts, they can't turn them in. And then there is a Chromie ban as well. Yeah, so they've opted to ban Chromie every single match tonight. I don't know if that's just because it's meta or if if uh, Soak Every Lane has a very scary Chromie player that they don't want picking that hero up. Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't see it on anything that I saw, but, you know, probably maybe a little bit of both. I mean, Orphea and Chromie kind of, you know, they want to land those Qs. The Ws are uh, a big part of the kit as well, um, and they can both kind of, you know, Poke from far away, and there you go. There's going to be your Garrosh uh, on Segatai there as the first pick. I guess I didn't like the Mephisto from last game taking that away. I can't blame <laughs> him. He had some real good durances. Yeah, it's really disruptive, and he can just get so much poke in, um, and really uh, like kind of displace the team. It's almost like a, a Meiji Junkrat where like. You kind of have to worry about him and where he's moving, and he kind of put you in a bad situation. But we're going to see the Deckard and the Raider uh, flopping back over uh, to this side this time. We did have Raynor getting picked up first two games on the side of Eric and Nephilim this time. Soak every lane, deciding to deny them that pick, picking it up themselves. Null pointer, again going with the white main. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a target ban onto the white main, because it does seem like that is the healer null pointer always goes for. Yeah, and so far, because I don't believe he goes the brute, so not a lot of follow-up CC on the side of uh, Arrogant Nephilim, so if they want to do a pick comp, um, you know, they may have to do uh, just some quick blow-up, maybe a gray main. Uh, and a Jaina on that side. Uh, but Malfi will get picked up again here. Maybe some double soak action if need be. Uh, and then Cassia Band coming out here. Hmm. Yeah, I was just kind of looking over the last couple drafts to see what they might ban here. Uh, that Deathwing is still up and available on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. It was kind of a little bit of a pain to deal with on Towers of Doom. But they're often going to yeah. take away the Cassia instead. I, I expect there's the Diablo ban, maybe something they don't want to deal with. But a May this time, again, another one of those just tanks you don't want to deal with. You can get the you know the ice wall up. That combos well. Okay, uh, Joanna is still up if they want to do that. Mm -hmm. most, most, I feel like most tank players play Joanna. Yeah, that's like the, that's like the training wheels one. Uh, kind of just the, play the Diablo. Joanna. The Diablo is still yeah. available too, and the Diablo is pretty dominant in the game number two. So. We might see that as well. Oh, paired with a Tassar too. 
yeah, so maybe some uh, Archon action here. Uh, I don't see too many combos with the Black Hole. It doesn't look like they're going too dive heavy. I know Black Hole can be a good dive uh, comp counter, uh, but I expect maybe it's a gray no, here. here Jaina. Here's the thing, though. You're, you're playing into a Meltiel and a Garrosh. You need that extra health pool and shields from the mm -hmm. Archon to keep you alive, especially if you get caught out of position, which is so easy to do on Tassadar because the Q animation takes forever. <laughs> so you can start your Q cast and be complete safe position and then everything shifts by the time it's done casting that you're now being tossed into the enemy team. Yeah, he's a tricky hero to play just because he stands still for so long. Uh, Leoric getting picked up on the side of Soak Every Lane. I love a Leoric. And they also uh, pairs well against the Deathwing. That was grabbed by Arrogant Nephilim. I did say they picked that in game number one. They didn't ban it out here, so it was up and available, and that's what we're going to see grab, as well as the Falstad. Yeah, I'm excited. Any uh, any draft you like better than the other one? Hmm. Let me just take a minute, run some calculations. Get your algorithm out. <laughs> I think that Soak Every Lane has the better potential here. They have the Leorg to kind of counter the Deathwing this time. Uh, they have Deckard to stay a while and listen with an APOC underneath it. it can be quite devastating. Um, and, you know... Depending on what Leo goes to at the level 20, if they decide to grab a an Entomb, it could work pretty well for their team here. Um, yeah, I, I, I we'll just have to see how it plays out, but I'm going to call it, it's going to be Soak Every Lane. What about you? Yeah, I'm leaning that side as well. I'm just not sure how arrogant Nephilim win this uh, in, in the team fight. Um, you know, they do get a Garrosh flip and a Q into the stun, and then, you know, maybe Deathwing puts the pool down, Falstack can get a Q off. Yeah, the thing is, is uh, my, my one worry, they drafted Garrosh, which is typically you're going for those isolated pick burst damage onto them, but a lot of their damage is sustained damage. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, unless Falsad is planning on talenting into Q build and, and stacking his Q to get burst damage on. It might be a little bit tricky for them to get those kills, but we'll just have to see. I mean, they there's not really... The, the issue is on the side of Soak Every Lane, a lot of these members getting tossed in have no way to escape. A Leo can eat the toss easily and just Wraith walk out. The Diablo can eat the toss as well and then turn around and Q out. But if Raynor, Deckard, or Tassadar get thrown in, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. I mean, Raynor has his Q to knock back and kind of create some space. Tassadar can throw a wall, but if you're in there, you're in there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't play a whole lot of Tassadar, but I'm guessing that whatever that used to, uh, the uh, Invisible... Might be maybe picked up here just in the off chance he does get picked up. But we're going to see Falstad go Seasons Markman. So we're going to see the auto attack build uh, from both Deathwing and Falstad here. Let's introduce these teams real quick. On the left-hand side, Arrogant Nephilim with Dekiladin on the Deathwing. Segatai on the Garrosh. Null Pointer playing White Main. Triumph on the Falstad. And on the Malthiel, we're going to have Kime. All right, and Philippic on that Leoric kid, picking up that Diablo again. Tornado on the Rainer. A spam on that Deckard and Doubles on the Tassadar. I also just think Thalstad is a bit of a weird pickup for Tomb of the Spider Queen, too. It's not really a map that you can get global value from. No, but I guess it could be a disengage for that Diablo if they go Gust. But hopefully they prove us wrong here, and uh, maybe we'll, we see a new uh, team comp for that here. Stun landing onto the Tastar there. Deathwing getting a little bit of damage out, but nothing too major. We're seeing Arrogant Nephilim a little bit behind on this wave clear, that top wave managing to crash onto their top wall. All sad, now flying. Getting, trying to get some global value, going down here, looking to pick up the Siege Giants in the bottom lane while Leo and Malthiel fight it out here. Ooh, and second high getting a little low, but that armor is a little deceptive on the Garrosh, but that final Q coming out from Tassadar will seal his fate. Yeah, 4v3 in that mid lane there is going to help them secure the first blood onto the Garrosh. And check this out in the bottom lane. Leo does see them on this camp, but unfortunately, he is not going to be able to stop them. It might even get killed for this here. 
Key and that's going to be seen. Lior getting picked off by the Melfiel in the bottom lane with a little bit of help from that Falstad. Diablo setting up to maybe kind of catch this soak, look for a gank in return with the rest of his team rotating down now. I think they're just going to clear these out and then get back to their normal rotations. Rainer needs to be a little bit careful here. He's stepping up in the lane. No teammates around to help him. Garrosh running in, mounted up, looking to get the pick on him. Tassiter with a nice wall to block that from happening, as well as the knockback from the Rainer to dismount the Garrosh and create some space for him to walk away. Yeah, and maybe that's just what we see here between with uh, Trabe and uh, Kime just rotating in on some people, getting a fly, and just getting some of these picks and some stragglers in the off lane, and just providing uh, just an advantage for the team for the rest of the match. A little bit of damage being traded back and forth here. Good Garrett is going to try to step up for the throw, but couldn't find it there. They are fighting in minion waves. Instead, Diablo flipping Garrosh and Kuhim into the back line of Soak Every Lane, now taking a ton of damage from the Tassadar and walking away. Man, only Rainer, to blow that indomitable there. Rainer just like rotated right through the vision, not even afraid. Here's White Mane getting caught by the Diablo. Stun goes out onto her. Here's a wall blocking her off from the rest of her team, looking to try and escape. She's on the run now. She's going to make it out of there. Yeah, that uh, Deathwing stun on three members of Soak Every Lane really helped Nullpointer sneak out of there with the life. We're going to see the Q coming out onto the Diablo there, about half health, getting poked down by Trabe there. Um, but he's going to be able to walk away there as we just see the everlasting quest for the Spider Butts. But uh, turn in is up and available on the side of Arrogant Nephilim here as they look to turn this in here. <laughs> just the big old dragon be able to take up that whole event there, not allowing anybody to get through. Yeah, they only need nine more gems turned in to get that first spider phase going for them here. Uh, turn in's now up and available for Soak Every Lane as well. <clears throat> Kime landing this, or Kid landing on the stun on Akime, but he's able to use his W, get back into a good position, and walk away. All right, and it looks like Trey was able to sneak in there in that top lane and get nine of those old spider butts turned in. Erica and Nephilim just slightly ahead on XP soak now, and they have these spiders coming in to help Siege. So they're gonna have to see if they can manage to find themselves a bit of a level of lead objective here, with the objective here. <clears throat> yep, and we'll see another team push down in the mid lane. Oh, kind of that mission. Oh, tower shot here. White Mane's trying to heal him up. It's going to be a little bit difficult for their tank to step up to look for something now. He's just soaked too much tower shots before the spiders arrived. A little dangerous. So you're going to be able to clear out this mid spider, I think, because of that. Top spider pushing in, though. So we're going to see a rotation from Arrogant Nephilim going up here, looking to clear out some of the top lane, open it up for a potential boss pick later in the game. Yeah, and I'm going to note, when we see uh, Decker grabbing the Emerald there, maybe learning a lesson from game number one, but with the mouthfeel, the Deathwing, and Falstad also going for hammer games with the White Mane, just being able to reduce some of that healing in these team fights. And then pushing this uh, Potion of Shielding as well this time. Uh, to, so he's reducing the armor on the Deathwing. He's going to have shields uh, against the auto attacks from everybody on that team and reducing the enemy's team. And that's why I think most most healers should just keep Deckard in their back pocket because he can do so much and bring so much to these teams. Mm -hmm. Bruiser camp being picked up now on the side of Soak Every Lane. Both teams almost even on XP. So Arrogant Nephilim still slightly ahead. Going to hit those level 10s first unless something major happens around this turn in point. We do have Soak Every Lane also sitting on enough gems to get that turn in if they want to try to do that. But right now, they need to step back, get those level 10s before they try to force anything. Yep, Rainer's going to back after grabbing that camp by himself. They're going to have to push these lanes out a little bit so that way they can get as much pressure uh, with these uh, web weavers as possible. But we're going to see the continuation of just, you know, Arrogant Ethel pushing down hard down this mid lane. We've got the top wall down as well. Uh, so all three walls down and pushing on forts. Oh, 
Okay, level 10s are hit on the side of Soak every lane. We actually see Tassiter talenting in a black hole instead of that Archon. Sailbond Listen coming out from the Deckard, and Tomb coming out from the Mouthyel, who we just saw get picked off bottom by the um, Mouth... or the, the Leor getting picked off bottom by the Mouthyel. Rainer's still waiting to pick up his ult with the Apoc from Diablo. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think... Because, yeah, I guess this is the first Rainer for Soak every lane here. I mean, Hyperion's not bad. He can get the extra siege damage with these web weavers here. But he's another Rainer's Raider who is great on vision and the extra damage as well. Uh, but being able to pop that unstoppable there and on the ult the sleep coming out, we're going to see the Hinterlands Blast coming out. We're going to see the Apoc coming out. But we're going to see definitely just trapped inside of that in Doom there. And we're going to see Tassadar go down as well. Apoc coming out, not being able to connect with anybody on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. But Philippic is not done with this Deathwing. He's got his arm out, trying to deal with him as best as possible. No, I think this is a, is a great defense so far from the side of Silk Every Lane. They managed to really chunk down the side of Arrogant Nephilim, forcing them to all have to back to tap, giving them a bit of a window to clear this mid spider. Rainer needs to be a little bit careful. They are looking to try and engage on him here. And I think he recognizes that he's backing up. And here comes the Diablo to try and help defend the top lane as well. And we're going to see Philip pick probably go down here. Yep, we're going to see the last rights come out on underneath his own tower uh, there as Kime still continues to push. But we're going to see Dubles rotate down and try and get some more poke onto Kime as he has to peel away. Decker getting caught on the rotation there. He gets picked off as well on the side of Soak every lane. They still have Turnin up and available if they want it. They just need to find some space to do that now. It starts to become a little bit of a challenge when you're down all your forts and structures to manage to make it to the middle of the map for these turn-ins without getting picked off or engaged in a sticky situation. Level 13s are going to be up in a moment on the side of Arrogant Nephilim as well. And Tomb landing onto the Deathwing, he's going to pop his Cataclysm and get out of there. Yeah, and he did go burn beneath my shadow. So as this game progresses here, and if we lose any more of these forts and or keeps, he's just going to have that Cataclysm again and just kind of just... You know, he can be, he's, he'll be able to get in and then get out again with his ult. So here's the thing right now. If Soak Every Lane, lane turns in at the moment, they're not going to have that level 13 talent here to kind of start off their push. So right now, they got that spider turn in, but slightly behind and uh, not on equal talent tiers with Arrogant Nephilim. Arrogant Nephilim could look to try and engage here. Um, they have a few alts up that they could work with to look for some picks before they hit that 13 and before the spiders spawn in. Looks like uh, Soak Every Lane is just going to be the aggressors here, choosing to siege in this top lane. They don't worry that they're down those level 13s. They're ready for the engage, and Tomb goes out onto the Garrosh, and he's going to be able to walk away as he threw the Leoric away from the opening of the Entomb, but getting really low in the meantime, manages to pop the tap, and now White Mane's here to heal him out. Cataclysm coming out from the Deathwing. Rainer a little bit forward, but he's going to be okay. He's safe and just looking to do what damage he can. And there's a spider falling. All right, and we're going to see Philippic just kind of get tossed away from the, the friendly team there as they head down mid to clear the rest of those spider butts, and then bot should just disappear on its own. <laughs> Leo using his Wraith Walk there to escape. Rainer walking away, seeing the rotation coming on to the two of them. I'm gonna be able to get out of there. Still a little bit behind, a, a level behind on XP on the side of Soak Every Lane, and Tomb comes out, doesn't connect. All right, even Talonteers, Deathwing up in the air to see if maybe they try. I know they just used Entomb there and kind of whiffed on it, um, but no real engagement. Second attack getting a little close because we see the flip and the wall bang out onto Garage. It's probably unstoppable, a beautiful wall coming out from Doubles there. Stay a while and listen, coming out to just lock teammate in place. But he has his eyes set on Rainer there as he continues to chase down. He's going to flip back onto him, gets a body block in, but a wall bang onto Kime there. But no one's blast oh, coming out and just, oh my goodness, oh. just a quad kill coming out. And Philippic is not long for this world either. And there goes that as well. And we see a team wipe, but not before Diablo spends his souls to come back. Not an area you want to fight in with a hinterlands blast. All three members just getting absolutely destroyed there.
<laughs> Just like game one, I think in this game, I think Arrogant and Nephilim heard us talking about their team comp and us wondering how in the world were they going to win some of these team fights, and I think they just showed us right there. Level 16 also up now on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Soak every lane, uh, almost two levels behind now, so they're going to need to try and figure out how they're going to come back in this match here. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be tough. They have to do this defense down, Talenteers. They are choosing to defend the mid keep first. Jules has to be careful he's got slowed a little bit there. He is going to pop his uh, invisibility cloak there and just sneak on out of there. We're going to see the flip out onto Kip. We're going to see the stun from Deathwing into the flame. Philip is taking all of the fire breath damage. And unfortunately, that dot damage is going to lock him down. But Black Hole coming out, not being able to connect with anybody. Deathwing getting a little bit low there. Doubles is going to be unfortunately going down here. Kid trying to do what they can to maybe lock Kill. Into his blast coming out there. Second day popping the unstoppable. We're going to see. Diablo eating that last right here as we see a keep go down here. We got a uh, spider pushing in the bot keep as well, and we may see a core call here. It looks like Arrogant enough will maybe want this game, but we're going to see Philip come back here. Pre 16 death timers helping him out there a little bit. He's going to get the stinky arm onto Kime, and they're going to peel away here and maybe grab a boss. Yeah, unfortunately, Soak Every Lane losing a ton of gems here. Now only have seven for turn in, so they're very far away from being able to get spiders. Um, and you're right, here's the boss call coming out from the side of Arrogant Nephilim. And uh, Soak Every Lane still looking for that level 16. Yep, that's kind of what they're going to scurry along here and do. They're just going to grab this camp and try to get some pressure back in this mid lane. Philippic's going to clear this out as well, so we can kind of get some pressure there as the rest. Uh, rotate down on bot here to try and catch 16s to get a uh, defense here on this boss that is walking right towards their core. They do have those level 16s up now. Toss onto the Leo who's going to be able to pop his Wraith walk and walk away. They need to try and get some picks here, otherwise the boss damage with the damage of Arrogant Nephilim, they can look to end this game. All right, and we are here. We're going to see Deathwing pop that Cataclysm here, try and uh, deal with all that damage. Black Hole getting stuck. Garrosh stuck in that Entomb. What a great job there. We're going to see all that dot damage coming out. We're not going to be able to see Deckard walk back <laughs> into the Hall of Storms. The Doubles is going to try and get some of that poke damage out. He's going to eat AE stun by the death point here, but Ping's coming out on that boss. They need to focus that boss. He may just get shoved back for trying to walk into that Hall of Storms there. Boss is going to go down, but Philippic is going to get go down as well. We see Hinterland Blast coming out and catching the tail end of Tassadar here, and Ping's coming out on the core, and that's going to be GG game going over to Arrogant Nephilim. What a match. I thought they were going to be able to do the defense there. It looked so good for a moment, but unfortunately still able to turn that around at the last second. Uh, and finish the core off, closing the series out two to one for Arrogant Nephilim. Yeah, I'm wondering, I was looking at the builds there and then Leoric's build there, he was going the full uh, Wraith Arm build. So I'm wondering if Entomb was the pick or maybe it was a maybe a misclick because it looked like he was going to go March, the March build um, for all the sustains in that fight. So I'm just, just curious. Um, I mean, that just might be because he's facing Deathwing, but still one of the Entomb. Potentially. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. Leoric, you're playing a hero that you really need to get to level 20. If you don't get to level mm -hmm. 20, you're just not getting value from his alts. Because once you get level 20, you have the silence on the entomb. Or if you opt to go um, march, you have the the um, drain hope. Yeah, drain hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have the drain mm -hmm. hope going on to everyone if you talent into it, which is just absolutely devastating. Uh, so it, it's really unfortunate when you end up in these matches where level 20s aren't hit, they are able to close the game out before it's reached and Leor gets his power spike. Uh, and, and that's just one of the downsides of playing a Leo, I think. Yeah, but just a great set of matches here, real back and forth. It didn't really feel like, you know, 17 to five was the kill count there, but it feels like, uh, you know, so Kevin Lane had a little bit more uh, team fight victories in that one, especially in the early game. Um, but yeah, Kime, 6 10 and 0 uh, on the uh, Malfuel. Uh, just really, I think, hard carrying like he did in the first game on uh, on Malfuel in that Towers of Doom match. 
All right, I am reaching out to the captain of Arrogant Nephilim. I'm going to see if they want to do an interview. Sure. All right. So let's go meet him in the NGS lobby. Sounds good. GG's, welcome. Congrats to Arrogant Nephilim. And I have to ask right off the bat, because there was a lot of talk in chat, how do we say your name properly? It, it, it's Trabe. It's like Trabe. it's like train, okay. but with... with <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Trabe. Okay, so uh, let's get into this. Um, my first question for you guys is uh, the Chromie bands. Is that something that you're just banning because of meta, or is there a Chromie that you're target banning on Soak Every Lane? We're actually not totally sure. Uh, we <laughs> saw a lot of other people banned Chromie against them. And okay. I don't particularly like facing Chromie anyway. Mm -hmm. Fair. And there, there wasn't, you know, their team is really, um, they, they have a lot of players that are happy to play about eight different things. So there was no one trick we had to absolutely get out of there. So we said, look, the, we don't, this hero is kind of annoying. Uh, they might have a good one. Let's just not deal with this at all. Let's cut ourselves off at the pass. Absolutely. Um, going into game number one, you guys picked Towers of Doom. Did you kind of have an idea and strategy of how you were going to run that one? Um, it's a map that we've had pretty decent success on in the past. Um, I don't think there's, we don't have some crazy strategy or, or, uh, didn't bust out any hidden strats that we were doing. Um, <laughs> a reasonably common played map that we feel pretty comfortable on and, and plays decently well with the heroes we like to play. Um, so it's always a nice starter map to maybe get out game one and, and, and shake some of those jitters off. Yeah, it's a personal favorite of mine, so no complaints here. Um, and I just wanted to speak to game number one a little bit. Uh, good job on the Melthiel, because holy view. Was it you playing Melthiel in game one? It was Kime. Okay. Uh, sorry. The Melthiel was holding his own great against the Zul and just kind of keeping you guys ahead in XP and soak the entire time, getting picks on the Zul. Uh, so very well played there. Uh, that was great to see. Uh, um, Kime's been putting in a lot of time recently trying to make sure the hero pool is, is nice and solid and well-rounded. Um, but on, you know, if it's one of them dual soaky maps, yeah, he's got a lot of practice on the Melthiel, so he's, he's always happy to pull that one out. Yeah, no, he's, he did really well on it tonight. Um, we, we see the Deathwing being picked up a lot by you guys. Is that one of your, like, key pocket picks you guys like to try and go for? We It's one that we've pulled out a couple times. Um, I think last season we played it maybe three or four times. Um, it just, it feels like a, enough of a sort of an off-meta pick that throws teams off a little bit. Um, with as good as, good as the teams are in Div B, mm -hmm. we've just found you go out there and you try to draft a pretty standard comp, you have to execute it really really effectively um to beat some of these teams and we know so every lane is one of the top teams in the division uh so going in i at least was thinking let's try to get at least one pick in every game that's going to sort of not be something they expect from us um that maybe throws them off their game a little bit so that they're not coming at us with everything they have if we can get them from like 100 percent to 95 confidence that might be the crucial difference that it takes <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think that's it's a good pick to kind of have on your roster because it does force a team to have to sort of play around a big, big beefy dragon. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about your team, how long you guys have been playing together? This is our seventh season together, um, and it's the same core five-man roster those whole seasons. Oh, really? That's that's awesome. So, um, I think that is one of our big advantages and why we um have done pretty well in Div B historically is just that uh, a, a lot of teams are shaking up, changing rosters. I know Soak Every Lane swapped two or three folks around. Uh, recognize some names, but see some new ones. Um, but especially early in the season, we're able to go out there and play, I think, a lot more confidently. Mm -hmm. um, just because we know what we want to do in drafts. We know what maps we like. We know what the hero pools are. Um, we just played together long enough that, that the experience brings a lot of, it brings a lot more confidence to the table, I think. So at this point then with your team, are you guys kind of all locked into rules in terms of who plays tank, healer, solo lane? For the most part, uh, sometimes we've we've been thinking a little bit about not necessarily full-time swapping roles, but um, just keeping things a little more flexible. We, we've tried a couple people swapping in for the offlane every once in a while based on map. Um, Dak, the Kildan and I have, have been swapping around a little bit between the, the mage and the DPS, but... 
I, I think historically we always kind of fall back to me on some sort of mage, Kime up in the off lane to kill it in on some sort of AA shooty folks. Uh, uh -huh. I suspect it's going to probably settle into that in the future here as well. <laughs> we actually have killed in the chat right now saying, no wonder I'm tired of you guys. After <laughs> Kime saying seven years <laughs> or seven seasons. Uh, that's yeah. funny. Um, Dax, do you have any questions here before we get into shout outs? Yeah, I guess the only question I have is just, you know, game two, you know, they kind of looks, they, they took you to uh, BOE. Uh, looks like they drafted the team comp that, that you know that they wanted. You guys didn't ban the Orphea, which um, you know looks like they had a good win rate. I think going into that game, seventy five percent win rate on the Orphea. Um, but just as a team with as much continuity as you guys do have, you know what's the mindset like? Even going into a loss, excuse me, it's a it's a one one. But like what you know what what's the atmosphere in the team uh, just going into that game three? Uh, the good thing about this season so far is that. We lost both of our first two series, so there's not a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's not like in past years, sometimes you go out and you win four straight series and you're number one on the scoreboard. And like, yeah, we're so good. We got to beat everybody. We can't drop a map and you lose one map. And so oh, what happened? We're, we're the gods of NGS. How could we lose? Right. Here it's like, there's some really, there's some good teams in Division B. Um, and so I mm -hmm. think we're, pretty much every match we play this season, we're going to know that dropping one, two maps is entirely a possibility. Um, and that... We're just going to go out there and, and do the best we can. We can't get down on it because they're good. It's not like we're messing up. Um, our, yeah. I'm not going to say we played that game perfectly, uh, but it's just that they're a really good team and they went out there and executed. And so you can't beat yourself too much up about it. You just go out there, draft something else, uh, swap around some heroes randomly, and <laughs> hope it goes a little better <laughs> next time. And make sure they don't get Orphea because, oh my God, why is this hero still like <laughs> it? <laughs> why is she, yeah, and why is she not from a band all the time? Absolutely. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I I I don't remember if this is the case, but I'm going to say it was because it makes me look good. I was saying we should still ban the Orphea game too, and they said you gotta ban Gray Main on BOE. And I said, <laughs> I'm so wise and you are fools. And, <laughs> you know, but that's how it goes sometimes near the cap and the crown is happy. So. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's a coin flip, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> especially, especially on a map like that where you know the objective you need all of the burn um, to win the objective, but if you win a team fight you know, then you don't have to worry about is burn as much. Um, so it's kind of, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of kind of thing. But like you said, the crown is heavy. <laughs> um, Let's get into shout outs. But just before we do, I just want to say I, I really enjoyed watching your guys' matches. I, I mentioned earlier, I picked up the game of Soka Relane Uwu and your game against Uwu as well. So I was really looking forward to see how you guys matched up to against each other. And uh I really enjoyed the matchup. I thought the games were really close and very entertaining. So thank you for letting me cast your games. Now, shout thank outs. You for picking up. <laughs> um, shout outs to our subs. We have four this season, so I really hope I can remember all their names. It's uh, Mig and Antaeus and Saris and Penguin. I did it. Um, <laughs> one of them has gotten to to take the field, and I'm pretty sure the other three are going to be with how, or how all of our scheduling has been so far. Um, so it, it's uh, great to have a good folk good group of folks backing us up uh and, and ready to jump in uh and then shout outs to I feel like i should shout out something else i don't really have anything in mind Val, come on. uh <laughs> shout out to it's almost friday <laughs> yeah, okay. half, and then we're almost free <laughs> all right well thank you so much for joining us for the interview here congrats on the win uh i'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with the rest of division b west i've been keeping my eye on it so uh i'm, I'm looking forward to see how your team performs the rest of the season good luck to you and i hope to catch you again in the nexus much thanks for picking up the game yeah no problem bye, -bye. Yep, see ya All right, let me get Dax back on the line here. Okay, just give me a moment to get him back up on camera. Oh, perfect. Sometimes 
Sometimes when I cancel out a call and go back in, it doesn't want to show your face right away and I have to go mess with all the settings again. But this time it worked out. <laughs> Welcome no back, need, Dex. No need. <laughs> Um, all right, that wraps up my stream and the cast for tonight. Thank you so much, Dax, for joining me to co-cast. Uh, it was it was nice to have someone filled with silences and give my voice a break. Um, and I really appreciate you being here. I know it's getting pretty late for you. <laughs> it, you know, it's all right. I appreciate you asking me to be here. It's always a lovely time casting with you, Jazzy. Uh, my Fridays, yeah, they're pretty uneventful. Just a lot of paperwork for me. I get to work from home on Fridays, so I think a few cups of coffee can't uh, can't fix. Yeah. Uh, well, that's going to wrap up stream for tonight, guys. Uh, I will be streaming again tomorrow if you want to come check that out. We're doing some in-houses for CCL players. Nothing, like, affiliated with them or anything. Just trying to get some eyes on some players that haven't been seen yet. Uh, that's happening at 6 p.m. And then, of course, I will be casting a ton more NGS games coming up. My next one's going to be Sunday if you want to check that out. Uh, it's going to be Heroic Division. I believe it's at 7 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see it on the ending screen for sure, though, when we get there. Other than that, have a fantastic rest of your week uh, and have a good night. Thank you again, Dax, for joining me. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you.